Welcome to the Informatica Cloud, the industry's first enterprise data integration platform as a service. Today we're going to talk about using custom functions. We actually have a real world scenario where we're going to take orders um, and sum them up by customer and then integrate them into Salesforce account order total field. Right, we're going to do this by building a custom function um, and then deploying it into the cloud services for use by line of business users. Now this is really a familiar development model. For example, in salesforce.com, um, when you're building a force.com app, you do it in the Eclipse IDE, which works at a workstation for developers, and then you can deploy it to force.com as a native app. Um, Apple iPhone has the same thing. You have an Apple IDE that runs on a Mac, um, and you deploy that to your iPhone. Um, Informatica has the same model, uh, essentially using the Informatica cloud platform. Um, you can build these more advanced configurations and then deploy them and use them um, in the cloud services. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go right into the Informatica cloud platform. This is the mapping designer where you design these map mappings. Now the way it's going to work is uh, we're doing something specifically called a maplet. Because the maplet has inputs, which is over here on the left. It has outputs, which is over here on the right. And then something happens in the middle. So when we get to the Informatica cloud services, we'll add something called a custom function, which will be this maplet. And your input will be whatever you set up over here on the left. Your output will be whatever you set up here on the right. And the middle is the magic uh, black box. Now in this case, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that because we're talking about how to take custom functions um, and deploy them in the cloud services. So the way this works is uh, we have different types of inputs. Um, you go through the aggregator function. This is called an aggregator. Um, and then you can group by different things. So this groups by, and then it does different operations on each of the different fields you pass in. So first, last, min, max, count, all that kind of stuff. And so when I create this maplet in the Informatica Cloud Platform, remember my input's on the left and my output's on the right, and then something in the middle, um, I'm going to export this from my repository, and then I can simply import it right back into the cloud services and use it um, in a simple integration. So let's go ahead and bring up, uh, here's my repository. Um, all I really need to do is go into the same place in my repository, I go to cloud, I go into maplets, and then I can come over here and I can right click and I can actually export um, right from this maplet. I can save it um, right here in my aggregate functions section. And now when I go into, let me go ahead and bring up the cloud services, I can come over here to the cloud services, I can actually go and uh, import that custom function to use with any integration tasks that I want. All right, so let's go ahead and click on configuration, custom functions, and let's go ahead and make a new custom function. So we're gonna go to custom function, we're gonna add, you know, I'm gonna call it my aggregator. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and make active as true. We're gonna upload that file that we just exported from the cloud platform. It was called 30 ports, no sort. Um, now we can bring it right in here into the Informatic Cloud Services and hit okay. And you'll see that what it shows you right here is the inputs and the outputs. Now remember the middle can be anything. We've done all kinds of different things from you know calling web services in the middle to upsert data into Zectar or Target or get um, account data from Oracle Sam on demand, but essentially what you see in the cloud services is the inputs and the outputs. The middle is where all your magic stuff happens. Now let me take a digress for a minute and go over here on our main web page, so the informaticacloud.com. You can actually go over here to cloud integration processes, right? And then you have the cloud integration exchange, and you can actually look for these different custom functions that you can use. So for example, uh, I can go to special purpose. Um, I actually have the one that we just did uh, right here, some average first, last, etc. from data. Um, and you can actually take it to our knowledge base or our community URL and you can essentially get that custom function and import it right into the cloud services without even the need for um, the cloud platform, right? So this is allows you to reuse components as you go for your data like we're doing. Right. Let's go ahead and make a new data synchronization task. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and I hit new, and now I have a nice six step wizard to success to complete my task. So I can go, all right, order summary. 
um, I can make my operation upsert. And so what we're going to do um, right to step two is we're actually going to grab um, the orders from Oracle. So let me pick my order ERP. Um, and since we're going to grab orders and we want to put them in the account objects, I actually want to do multiple objects. So let's go over here and add, um, for example, my customers and my orders at the same time. And now with the Informatic Cloud Services member, we actually grab the join condition, put it together for us. Um, and then you can see all the different orders that are available in that Oracle system as well as the customers. Now remember what we're going to do is we're going to take this order, order information and we're going to put it into Salesforce. But in the, in the process, we're going to actually use our aggregation custom function that, uh, of course, is available on the community site, but I just showed you how to build it. Um, and we're actually going to put that take the orders and sum up all the order values and bring them together, put them into the Salesforce into a new field in Salesforce called amount history. All right, so let's go ahead and do Salesforce account. Um, now our data filters, we're not gonna have any because we want all the orders. Um, and then on our field mapping, what we wanna do is we wanna add that custom function. So remember we just added it to cloud services. Now we wanna add it um, right here into a task. So now we've added a task, remember there are inputs, so source the custom functions input, custom function the target is our output, right? So what we want to do is essentially we want something to group by, so we're going to make that our external ID off of our account data, or customer data. So let's take our customer ID and make that the group by field. Um, and then we also want the order information, so let me come over here and get my demo orders. And we want to do a sum of the orders, so let's go ahead and take so it's not going to be in, it's going to actually be a number. So let's go ahead and take our order total, map it over here to our number field. Right, and now we can say, okay, that's the input, is the account ID and the numbers. And now the output is going to be, you know, essentially the same thing. I want to take my group by field, which is ID, and map it to be upserted into Salesforce so I can find the right record by that Oracle identifier. And now my new uh, column, or my new field that I have, which is order amount history, right? What I'm going to do is now, remember we did numbers and we did field one. And so for all the num field ones, I want to take the sum of those orders, right? Because I make kind of a generic custom function. Um, probably in practice, you would make it more specific to what you're doing, but this is one that anybody can use. Um, and I want to take the sum of the orders values that I have. And so remember what we're trying to do is uh, in my Oracle system, right, this is my Oracle sample application, I have fire suppression system. Um, he has multiple different orders associated with them that he's bought. Um, and that total is going to be 187,600. Now if I go look in Salesforce, remember I have a Salesforce record which is fire suppression systems. So that's their external ID. And I have this new field called order amount history where I want to see that same 187,600. This would allow my sales folks to actually see how much uh, product this company has ordered when they're selling more, of course. All right, so let's go back into Informatica Cloud. Um, that's really all that we have to do, right? We're taking the sum of the order and we're updating it. So let's go ahead and uh, save this task. All right, so I think we called it order summary one. So let's go ahead and run this guy. And what you can watch here is in the activity monitor, you can actually see the different jobs that are in action, or the different tasks that are in action, um, and actually how far they've progressed. So if I had lots of jobs running all the time to try to keep different systems in sync, um, I could simply see that right here in the activity monitor. And now when those jobs are done, uh, what happens is it simply flips over to the activity log uh, to show you what's happened. So this is what is happening right now. And so it looks like we got 155 rows. Uh, so we're flipping over and uh, we have success. So let's go right over here to our Salesforce account. And what we can do here is, uh, remember we're trying to update this order amount history. Let's go refresh the page. Um, and the integration should have just updated with that 187,600 number, uh, which is right there. And remember this is the total that we did through our custom function that we actually got by adding up all the orders for this record. Um, which is the fire suppression systems. All right, and uh, that's it for the Informatica Cloud today. I hope you guys learned something, and we'll talk to you soon.